Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with the final episode of my Small Stuff Quilt. I am so excited to finish this. All I need to do is sew all these blocks together and I will probably stop this video as a quilt top. If I do go ahead and back it, not in this video, but later, I'll show you what it looks like after I do that. But if I can get the quilt top done, I'll consider that good. We left off with me making these three guys. I used um, some of my little tiny patchwork piecing and just made that the focus of that block. And then two little half square triangle pinwheels. I just think they're so cute. I still have to put the center of that flower when I pull that block off to add um, the sashing around it. See, I'm considering the white like the frame of the block and then I'm going to sash it. And when I pull that one out, I will indeed fix that center and show you what I do there. I measured and if I wanted three inch uh, strips for the sashing, you know, cut it three inches, I would need ooh, like about a yard of fabric and I'm going to be using some brown leftover fabric from my gingham quilt and I have just about a yard but that scares me a little bit so instead of three inch strips did I say I was hoping to cut three inch strips I might cut two inch strips or even a little bit smaller I'm thinking now I would like the brown to just be very narrow and then it would give me more brown for a border all the way around. So I think it'll come out good. I absolutely do not have enough of more of this background. And I think I'm happier with the brown in between. I think it'll just add another dimension. I think I'm going to start in this corner. I will put a strip of brown there and there and then I'll have a quarter of this quilt top done. I decided to cut my brown strips one and a half inches wide, the full width of the fabric. With the seam allowance, it's going to end up making uh, like a one inch sashing between the blocks. I think I will like that. So I'm going to start by sewing some to the top of this block. This is going to join with the um, long rectangular strip above it. So I need some sashing up here. Turn this, and I don't cut my strip. Um, I sew it on first, and then I just cut what's left over. Like that. I think I mentioned this brown came from um, the gingham quilt that I made. You have to go watch that video. I will link to it down below. I'm going to make another one, I hope, of gingham with a twist. I will tell you about it when we get there. So now I just have to join this long piece to this. So it's going to go like this. I think I'm going to like that very much. Now I need to attach this to the little farm animal blocks. I just want to explain to you what I had to do. <laughs> I wasn't thinking in advance and when I sewed this long strip to here I didn't check to see if it was the same length and when I went to press it it was about an inch and a half too long. Now you may remember in a previous video I thought this was going to be too short this strip so I added background between but I guess I didn't need to do that. I don't know. But it was an easy fix. I just had to pick all the seam. I don't mind doing that. I kind of like it. Took it off and then what I did is I just took, you know, each piece between and I just folded over and I just sewed 
without cutting, just sewed another line. I determined that I needed to make this an inch and a half shorter. I had three places to do it. And so I needed to take off a half inch each. So I sewed a quarter of an inch seam allowance because when you sew a quarter of an inch, you're losing a quarter of an inch twice, you know, on each side of the seam. So when I opened it up, it would make it this um, a half inch smaller. And I did it there and there, and now it's perfect. See, matches up there, and the other end matches up. So this piece is now done. I'm sad. During the editing, I realized why my, my blocks didn't come out right. It's because when I planned for the brown, at first I wasn't planning on it being brown. It was supposed to be background, and I think I planned on it being wider. And that's why I had everything arranged on the bed like I did. And that's why I had made this strip longer because this here was going to be wider. So this had to match. But that's not what I did today now. I couldn't understand why this strip of the animals was too long, so I shortened it. What was supposed to happen is I was supposed to have like a two inch sashing and then it would have been a one and a half inch showing and then that would have fit. So I don't want to take all of this apart, but what it means now is my sashing is not going to be the same there's going to be some that is wider. That breaks my heart a little bit. I'll show you. For instance, here, let me back you up a little bit. So I've got this going on. I guess I'll do it this way, even though it's not going to be on that side. And then I have this and this. Now, I need for the white, you know, to match up here and here. So see, this is going to be bigger than an inch, so I'm going to need the brown sashing to be wider. There's no way I want to shorten this. I don't want lines in my white. I don't want to take apart all of that and then make this shorter. I just don't want to do all that. So I'm just going to have to go with um, some strips of brown being wider. And hopefully I can do that in a couple more spots so it just looks like it was meant to be that way, some narrow, some not so narrow. I'm just really glad that I did not cut all my strips. I almost cut them all, but I only cut two because I wouldn't have had any more fabric left to cut wider strips, and I didn't want lines in the sashing, so it's not like I wanted to sew two strips together. There's a lot to think about in a quilt like this, and again, as much as I'm kind of like sad, I'm not really frustrated because I'm learning so much by doing this. I've never done anything complicated like this, ever. That's why this is not going up for a penny auction. This sucker is mine. I worked hard for it. <laughs> I just wish so much I would have remembered. You know, by the time I get back to it, days have passed. I would have loved it if that was wider. All right, but there's nothing I can do about it now. So now I just need to figure out how wide my sashing has to be for here, and I have to take into account the seam allowances. I determined, hopefully correctly, that I needed a strip two and a quarter inches wide, and I'm going to join these two guys here, like that. That came out great. It's exactly the tallness that I need. See, I love the math part of this. That's what I like so much. But then I forget, like, what my plan was. Like, I needed to jot down how wide I wanted the strips. But I didn't. So, it's all good. Like I said, I'm learning as I go. And that's really the best way to learn, at least for me. You know, I, if I do it, and I make mistakes, you know, the same one two or three times, by that point, 
I'm not likely to make that same mistake again. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a couple times though. Now I'm just going to go ahead and finish these quadrants of this quilt top and then I will show you. You guys must think I'm a complete idiot. I don't know why I forgot that I had planned for the sashing to be a certain width. I was just so concerned with not having enough that I thought, oh, I'll make the sashing more narrow. All right, so here's the deal. I have to take this apart, but I'm okay with that because all I have to do is take this long sashing out because with it being narrow now, this whole piece is too narrow and it won't be able to connect to the big piece below it. So I have to take that out and make this wider and I'm very happy about that because then that means these two won't match. So it will look like it was meant, um, you know, for me to have narrow in some places and wider in some places. So I'm just going to pick the stitches out and uh, on both sides. I've got to take this whole brown strip out and put a wider and then I'll show you. I fixed this took that narrow strip out and replaced it with a wider one. I should be good now in the width. And I like that, you know, I have a wide with this narrow. If I can't have narrow all over the entire quilt top, then I'm glad that this and this are different. So hopefully I'll be able to have varying widths throughout. But that brings me back to worrying about if I'm going to have enough of this fabric. Because if I need wider pieces, I might eat that fabric all up. I should be okay for the inside of the quilt, but I'd like the border all the way around, hopefully. Even if I have just narrow for all around, then maybe I'll have enough background for around that. We'll see. I'll make it work somehow. I have to. I am up to the flower part now, and I think I'm going to just keep this very simple. This is all I have left of my background, um, plus the full width, so probably like, I don't know, a little more than a third of a yard. And I'm going to use a piece of it. I looked for scraps, but I have none, because I used them all. And I'm going to use a pill bottle for a circle, I'm going to draw around this. Let's see, right there. I'll probably sew outside of that line just to make sure it's big enough. I don't know, we'll see. And let me just cut a piece out. I need to have the right sides together. So I'm gonna make sure I cut it big enough. Okay. Now, I'm actually going to sew all around, and then I'll be snipping one side and turning that. I'll probably sew just a little bit to the outside of that circle. Wow, I'm going a lot to the outside. That's okay. Now, I'm just going to cut around my stitching. Now, I'm just going to separate this. I'm just going to make a, a cut on just this side, not both sides, just one side. I'm going to make a cut. And I'm just going to make a hole a little bit big enough so that I can turn this through that hole. Well, make it a little bit bigger. It's just a little awkward to get it started. There we go. We're getting there. Then it's going to give a, a circle that's, you know, finished. No raw edge. See? Let me just go press that. I mean, I can poke it out a little bit better. Let me press. Gee, when I tossed it on the ironing board, you know, it was nice and puffy, and I thought, why don't I stick a piece of batting in there? So I'm going to cut a piece of batting... I'm just going to cut close and then I can just make it smaller. Just want it a little bit smaller than the actual circle. We're going to stuff that in there. So let me just make it a little bit smaller. Let's see if we can do this. Would have been better had I thought of this before. 
I would have just sewn it in. Hey, I did it. There's a little bump right there that I can straighten out somehow. Okay, that feels good. Very good. I like it. I almost think now that I'm going to put a piece of fusible here, my stiffer one. Let me find that. Once again, I will just do a rough cut. Now I'm going to uh, just cut a little bit in. Just going to help me to uh, stabilize it. I wish I had double-sided. I do have to get the double-sided fusible because I could just glue it right on there. I could glue this on there. Oh my goodness. I have an idea because I found my um, like hem tape. So I'm going to stick that sucker on there just to stabilize this hole. Why can't I get that thread out? And then I have some, oh my God, I love that more than a button. I just like it so much. I'm going to press that, stick that right on there with my iron. That is stuck on there now. So now I have this that I want to just have something hold it down for me. See, I have this hem tape. This is really cheap. I'll link to uh, some down below to Walmart if they still have some in stock. Lately, if I link to Walmart uh, about something, it sells out. So you better hurry up if you want some. And I'm just going to, um, you know, put some of that there and then I'll press and then that will hold that circle on for me. I actually had to press from the back side because the heat wouldn't heat it enough uh, through the batting. So now I'm just going to sew and um, I don't know if I want to sew on the very edge. I kind of like to sew just on the inside. God, I hate to sew on it at all, but I have to. All right, I'm just going to follow the edge with my foot and sew. I just liked the looks of that with no lines on it. Me, me who loves lines. I'm just gonna go very slow. And I do like four or five stitches. Where are you? Hi, did you miss me? Uh, I do like four or five stitches and then I stick the needle in and then I lift and turn a little bit just to have it help me along. I'm going to call this flower done. I like it just plain like that. The batting didn't really do too much, but it does. It does give it some oomph. And then the back has the, that piece of fusible showing. I, oh my goodness, I'm done the flower. It makes it look much more like a flower. <laughs> I'm back. It's a whole other night. It might be two nights. I don't remember the last time I talked to you, but I have to tell you my quilt top and I'm not showing you the whole thing. The top is done and I love it so much that I'm so afraid I'm going to screw it up by trying to put a backing on it. I will tell you two things that I was forced to do that made me so much happier in the end. First of all, I didn't have enough background to finish all in this color, so I was forced to use this brown that I had. I love it. I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. The other thing is I was bumming that I wasn't going to have all skinny um, brown strips even throughout. I love that I don't. I love the different sizes of brown. When you see it on the bed, I think you will love it too. Here's what I'm doing. I have my unbleached muslin that I love so much. This is what I'm going to back it with. However, I had an idea. I don't know if anybody's ever done it before or done it this way, but I did put a border all the way around in brown. 
I'm going to do the like envelope style. I call it pillowcase kind of style. I'm going to cut a piece and I'm going to put right sides together. I'm not using batting. I want this to be a lightweight blankie for me. And I'm just going to sew all the way around and leave an opening and turn it and then I will sew around and I'll probably have to do some quilting at some point but I don't know that's not going to be in this video I hate to screw it up with quilting <laughs> but my thing is if I was going to sew muslin on the backing no matter what when the you know it's turned there's going to be muslin so a, a light color but up against this and you know it can roll to the front. I just didn't want that. So I have an idea. I you guys, I have no idea how I'm ever going to end this video. I have been trying all day. I recorded the rest after that little thing when I had an idea. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have had that idea. I do not like putting a backing on a quilt. I don't even like quilts, like actual quilts that have batting and are quilted. I don't care for that. It's just not something that I like. I like blankets, you know, and I don't need any more blankets even. But I wanted to save this one because I had put so much of my time into all those little pieces and stuff. And, um... You know, I just thought it would be a good souvenir. I should have something that I've made. And I should have been happy with just uh, keeping a quilt top and not caring about finishing it. But I decided I was going to finish it. And uh, it showed in my video last night. A, a lot of extra swearing. <laughs> I know some of you would have enjoyed. <laughs> but I know some of you wouldn't have. Because some people don't like that. I don't understand that. I like it. <laughs> and it's staying so I don't care how many people tell me you shouldn't swear who tells another woman a grown ass woman who who tells one adult tell another adult how to talk I will never understand that never I don't go around telling people can you please say fuck once in a while I don't tell people that I let people talk the way they want I want to talk the way I want you need to let me do that or just go away. That's all. Um, okay, so <laughs> today I tried to explain how I felt last night and why you're not going to see that footage. And I can't even show you all the footage that I recorded today explaining that because it ended up turning into kind of a rant thing like that almost started turning into. Because I'm tired now and I'm frustrated and it's all to do with just being mad at myself for not listening to my gut and saying, you don't need to do more than this, Darlene. You can just stop at the quilt top and, and call it a day or 10 weeks because it's been 10 weeks that I've been working on this particular quilt. But I moved forward with it. So now I'm going to tell you, I have to tell you something because it's all choppy from this point on. I do have some footage of it on the bed, which I would like to still show you. That is even choppy, because even in that, I couldn't stay on topic. I went off on tangents, so that has to be cut out. So I just want to tell you briefly, please, let's make this brief. I wanted a muslin backing. I wanted the muslin to have a brown border around it. That was my idea. I don't know if you're going to see any of that. I don't know what's so far in this. <laughs> I'm not watching what I edited. I'm not. I wanted the two pieces like this, right sides together, sew all around, leave a space, turn the whole thing, and call it quits while sew around. And, uh, and I wanted the edge to be all brown, so I wanted a brown border around the muslin backing. So I did that, but because I can't really cut good, I don't have a big table, and I was, I was just not into it. I wasn't into it. Nothing goes right if I'm not into it. The back came out billowy, and it kind of even, uh, you know, stretched a little bit of the borders on the front side. And I was so sad because I loved that quilt top so much. And I really would have been happy to just always look at it as a quilt top. And I really regret that I put any kind of a backing on it. Now, I could cut that backing off, but then my brown 
um, border around it would even be that much narrower. And I, I think at this point, I just need to leave it alone. I don't care if I just don't ever look at it again. It just needs to go away for a while so I can move forward and start something else. But I was in that kind of a place with it because I was so upset with myself that I let myself do something that I knew wasn't my happy place and I never should do that never and I kind of do it because I feel like I don't give enough to you guys by not finishing these quilts that's why I always make quilt tops and that's why I put quilt tops on eBay I have no interest in finishing them none and you know if I had to finish every one of them I I would hate this job so now I want to finish None of them, ever, again, <laughs> except for rag quilts. I'm okay with those because it's done, you know, as we go. So there are more rag quilt tutorials on the way. So you're going to see um, it on the bed, and that's going to be choppy because I kind of went on tangents even during that. And then I know it ends with me saying, I'll talk to you again downstairs. So let's watch that little part of it on the bed, and then I'll see what I have to finish up with. Oh, my God. Here it is. And before I start pointing out the things I don't like, let's just talk a little bit about the things that I absolutely love. I love that I did this. I cannot believe I did this. It doesn't even feel like as much work as it really was because, you know, I had all these like strip sets and things already done for me, but I did those too. Just didn't do them, you know, right at that moment. You know, I would have never put all those things together for the sake of making a quilt out of them. I was just putting those things together for fun and to show videos and it ended up, you know, being something that I could use. So I really love that. I love that I was able to put some motifs in there. I like those little tiny farm animals in those big squares. I, I just love that I have something gigantic there and there. Even though this is just strip sets, I just love it. I just like it all. I'm glad that I did my very first wonky stars. Happy with those. And my wonky trees. I love those too. I'll be doing more of both of those things. And then the little tiny pinwheels get out. Oh, so I love all that. I love the brown in between. And I love the, um, the different size sashing. I really like that. The only thing about the top that I might make a change to is the center of the flower. I think a little pop of color uh, would look kind of cool in the center, maybe even just a brown button. So uh, I think I'm going to uh, leave this here. Let me go talk to you downstairs again. Why didn't I just say bye from upstairs? What was I thinking? <laughs> I know what I was thinking. I wanted to talk about the next sampler quilt because I'm not giving up on this. <laughs> You know, I kind of sounded upbeat in that. I'm telling you, I was having a hard time to sound upbeat. And that's just the way I am. I just got discouraged because I don't know why. I cannot learn to just do what I know is right for me, for myself. It's very hard to, um, to get used to being selfish. <laughs> And, you know, I used to do whole videos about things like that, about the whole social aspect of doing things like YouTube. And, you know, uh, you know, people are always asking me, they find ways to ask me, why are your comments off? I couldn't find any way to comment and to tell you something. But I finally found a way. And it's like, boy, you had to work awfully hard to find me. Uh, did you even for a second think that maybe it's because I don't want to be contacted? I would have my comments turned off everywhere, across the board, if I could. But you just can't do that on most platforms. So I do it where I can because it keeps things at least somewhat quieter. And um, one of the things I struggle with is when people say things that I know they think are 
helpful. Gee, I miss it when you do that, or I wish you would show us how to back a quilt, for instance. I, I don't know how to do it, and I, I know you would show me in a way that I could understand. And so then I feel like I'm always falling short of what people want. But that's ridiculous, because I would never be able to please all people. Never. And I... I know that if I'm not happy, I'm not going to be able to record things. You guys know that about me. Those of you who have been with me for a long time through all these changes, you know that when I'm not happy with what I'm doing anymore, I just can't be any good for anything. You know, there was a time that I said, I don't think I'll ever stop car vlogs or tag-alongs. I did that for the longest time. And, uh, I finally got sick of it, and I'm not doing that anymore. And I have people telling me they miss that. Gee, I don't want to be told that. <laughs> you know? I don't want to feel like that's what I was good for, and only that. I want to be able to do what I feel like doing now. I've been recording for over five years. I'd still like to do a video about that, too. But I'm trying to keep the chatty stuff off my channel now. I just don't want to go in that direction except that I seem to be doing that in this video. But I'm just trying to explain to you guys, especially those of you who have been with me for a while, that I'm still that same person that I've always been. I just need to keep changing things because we change. We change over time. And I also worry about the people who are here with me now for the sewing. They're going to be the same people who are mad when I'm no longer sewing. I've been through that before. I have stopped sewing before. And people were like, oh, I can't believe that you don't do this, any, this kind of video. You're not not sewing and I miss those and now all you do is take us to Walmart there's always somebody not happy with what I'm doing and uh, it's just you know it just plays head games with you after a while with me at least and others I've been seeing a lot of youtubers talk about this same exact subject lately and it's uh, always encouraging for me when I know others are struggling in this way too. So I want to hang on to the sewing for now because it's what I feel like doing and I don't want to start doing things that are going to make me not like it, like put backings on a quilt just because I feel like that's what I should be doing, you know? And uh, I'm mad at myself that I didn't just stick to my gut, like I said, and just be okay with that and, and not be concerned. Um, you know, because some of you now hate all of this that I'm talking about right now. You know, people are unsubscribing. I didn't know she was like that. You know, I still get people who, like, find me because of a quilt video, and then they'll go watch something older, and they're like, they'll tell me, uh, you know, via email or where. I don't want to tell you how you can get in touch with me, but people find places. Um, they'll send me a message and say, oh, my God, you're just so fun. I've been watching all your quilting videos. And then... Like a day later, I'll get a message from the same person saying how shocked they are, how I I judged you wrong. I thought you were nice, and you you know you swear and you do this, and it's like, and then they hate me, and it's like a person had a love affair with me and a hate affair with me, all without ever even knowing me. You know what I mean? It's like people just feel like telling their feelings to a complete stranger. I have to shut up now. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching the next sampler quilt. I was going to talk about it, but I can't anymore. I can't. I've lost most of you already. So, uh, episode one, I will explain what the next sampler quilt is. You're going to like it, I think. Some of you will. Some of you won't. That much I know for sure. I can guarantee you this. I will like it. The minute I start to not like something about it, that's when I'm calling it quits on that one. It'll be done, and we'll move on to the next thing. But I think we're all going to like this one. Again, we're not all. I am. I'm going to like it. <laughs> Bye.